Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue learning about atomic structure by exploring the content from ebook chapters 1, lessons 4, um, and eventually we'll do lesson 5. In this video, we're going to focus on the learning objective to describe the difference between kinetic and potential energy using specific examples of each. Let's begin. Energy, what is it? Well, when you think about eating food, food gives you energy. Why does that happen? Because food has stored in the chemicals chemical potential energy. Your body then burns that food and converts it from chemical potential energy to mechanical energy or electrical potential energy when it comes to transmitting electrical si signals. So let's take an example of energy. Um, energy is the capacity to do work, it's the capacity to transfer heat. So let's say that we have a ball and it's rolling horizontally at a certain speed. We can mark and track its kinetic and potential energies. So if we look at the potential energy as being relative to its height and kinetic energy being, being relative to its speed, we see that when the ball goes up the hill, it begins to slow down, yet as it gets higher, its potential energy increases. What, up at the top of the hill, it reaches a maximum potential energy and a minimum kinetic energy. Then, going down the hill, we see that we have a conversion between potential energy again into kinetic energy. This brings us to what we call the first law of thermodynamics. And this states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it's only converted between forms. And there's going to be an asterisk here uh, because you'll learn later about nuclear chemistry. And in nuclear chemistry, we can uh, create energy from mass and from energy into mass. But for our purposes, we care only about the intraconversion between different types of energy um, such as kinetic and potential energy. A common example that we use in chemistry, in Chem 110 in particular, is Coulomb's Law. And Coulomb's Law describes the electrostatic potential energy that exists between two charged species, whether these are individual um, electrons or protons, or if they are ions themselves, consisting of a, of a set of electrons and protons. So this uh, describes the energy of interaction, and we see that it is proportional to the magnitude of the charge on each chemical species, as well as inversely proportional to the distance between those charges. If we were to plot the electrostatic potential energy as a function of distance, we could do so for both repulsive and attractive interactions. For repulsive interactions, we obtain these when we have either two sets of positive charges or two sets of negative charges. What we see happens is that at a low distance, because there's a high level of repulsion, there's a high potential that's stored in them to do work, for them to fly apart and do work. Yet as we pull them farther apart on our own, we see that that potential decreases and it approaches zero. The opposite is true for attractive interactions. These occur when we have positive and negatively charged species interacting with each other. When they are very close to each other, there is a low potential to do anything, yet as we increase the distance between them, they have a high tendency to want to snap back together. And so we can talk about um, charged species that are attractive as having a low electric potential energy, Notice that this is negative, whereas repulsive interactions are going to have a high electric potential energy, and that will be positive. Now, where does this negative sign come from? Well, if we have a positive and a negative value, then the product of those charges will be negative. If we have two positive values, the product will be positive, and if we have two negative values, the product will be positive. Okay, so we can think of this in terms of both the magnitude 
as well as the absolute or as, as well as the actual value. Let's go through an example here. So we have three pairs of charged species. We're going to label those pairs as one, two, and three. And each pair is separated by the same distance, we're going to say D. The sign and magnitude of the charges are indicated. So the sign tells us whether it's positive or negative. The magnitude gives us the actual value, one, two, or three. The question here is, how can we rank them in terms of increasing electrostatic potential energy? To do that, we're going to use Coulomb's law. And what we can do is we can um, evaluate each of these interactions based upon their charges. So we see for charge set number one that the charge of one of the species is negative one, the charge of the other species is positive one, and the distance we're going to say is d. Resolving that gets us negative one times k over d. For set number two, we have that we have a charge of negative one and a charge of negative three. When we multiply that times k and d, we get positive three times k over d. For the third set, we have a negative two charge and a positive one charge. Multiplying those gets us a negative two times k over d. Notice each has a factor of the proportionality constant over the distance. And so all we really need to pay attention to is the product of the charges. And since we want to rank them in order of increasing electrostatic potential energy, we want to go from the most negative to the most positive. The most negative value is negative 2. Then, and the most positive value is positive 3. That puts us then with negative 1 in the middle. So if we were to rank those, negative 2 corresponds to number 3, negative 1 corresponds to number 1, and positive 3 corresponds to, to set number 2. That gets us then an answer of E. So something to notice here is that 3 has the highest magnitude as well as highest absolute value. Uh, so that, that, that's problem set, or excuse me, charge set number two has the highest magnitude and the highest value. Charge set number one has the uh, lowest magnitude, a value of one, but an intermediate value. And that's because the magnitude and the value of charge set number three is more negative than in charge set number two. So we want to pay attention to the difference between magnitude and absolute uh, overall energy values. Number two has a magnitude of three and an overall value of three. Number one has a magnitude of one but an overall value of minus one. And, number th and set number three has a magnitude of two and an overall energy of minus two. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.